Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Japanese comedy drama film called When I Get Home, My Wife Always Pretends to Be Dead. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Jun Kagami is a regular office worker living in Tokyo with his wife, Chi Kagami. Jun believes that if a marriage lasts for more than three years without much hardship, the couple is made for each other. His first marriage ended after three years, so before marrying Chi, the two had made an agreement to renew their marriage contract after their third anniversary. If they feel like they can no longer be together, they will simply walk out of each other's lives. Currently, the pair's third marriage anniversary is approaching, and Jun is nervous about how their future will play out. While thinking about such things, he returns home from work. He rings the doorbell, but no one answers. It is quite unusual because Chi always welcomes him at the door. Jun uses the spare key to get inside and is met with a horrifying sight. Chi is lying limp on the floor with blood dripping from her mouth. He falls beside her and tries to wake her up, but to no avail. In this moment of panic, Jun remembers all the good times he has shared with his wife. On their wedding day, she had asked him not to die before her so she wouldn't have to live without him. A few seconds later, Jun comes back to his senses and composes himself. He tries calling for an ambulance when suddenly, Chi grabs his legs, revealing that it was just a prank. As Jun looks at her in shock, she asks him if he is surprised and giggles. When he doesn't reply, she simply asks him to come to the kitchen for dinner. After Jun has come out of his shocked state, he jokes about Chi using ketchup as fake blood. The couple laughs as Chi mocks Jun's reaction to the prank. For the rest of the dinner, their mood is happy and lightened. The following morning, Chi asks for a kiss before Jun leaves for work. He tells her they are not newlyweds anymore, so it is just cringe. Chi, however, doesn't share his views. She hugs him tightly, claiming that they never know what will happen during the day, so this might be their last goodbye. On his way out, Jun drops off the garbage bag into the bins. A cleaning lady goes through them and sees the bloodied clothes from yesterday. She starts to believe Jun is doing something sketchy in his apartment. In the office, Jun tells his co-worker Sano about the prank Chi pulled on him yesterday. Sano compliments Chi for putting effort to be funny and wishes his wife was less serious. I'm with Sano. I wish my wife would occasionally trick me into thinking she's dead, traumatizing me for life. Jun thinks that Chi is testing to see if he still loves her, so it would be easier to decide if she wants to stay with him even after three years. Later, in the evening, Chi is cooking dinner when she gets a text from Jun saying that he is returning home. She smiles mischievously at the text, ready for her next prank. Some minutes later, Jun walks in and sees his wife lying on the floor with her head inside a realistic alligator's mouth. She is pretending to be eaten by the animal. Jun plays along and pulls her out of its mouth to save her. She dramatically thanks her husband for saving her life and says that they should eat dinner now. Following that, Chi continues to play dead every day, getting more creative with each prank. One day, she pretends to be a maid who died after being caught in a conflict. Following that, she is a trapped soldier shot by the enemies. But the one that impresses Jun the most is when she pretends to be shot by an arrow through her head. He compliments the creativity, although he is getting more and more bothered by the pranks as time passes. Jun cannot decipher why she is doing them, and with the third anniversary approaching, it worries him even more. One day, he is dumping the garbage again, which now mostly contains props that Chi uses to pretend to be dead. The cleaning lady goes through the bag and finds a bloodied knife. She makes a scene in front of everyone and calms down only when Jun explains to her that the blood is ketchup. He again expresses his uneasiness to his co-worker Seno, who suggests he send Chi to her parents' home for a few days. Yeah, let her give her father a heart attack instead. As they talk, Jun begins to tell him how he first met Chi and got to know her. He was in Shizuoka for a business meeting, but he missed his bus back home. Chi saw him running behind it and invited him to her father's restaurant. She was a pretty young girl, but her cheerful personality is what caught Jun's eyes. Her mother had passed away when she was only five, but she never let her sadness show in front of people. Before leaving, she had told him her wish was to eat a dessert from Mont St. Clair in Tokyo, and he invited her to the city sometime later. Sano is pleasantly surprised by the unique love story. That day, Jun returns home to see Chi has turned herself into an old soldier from the medieval period who died in the war. 
She has used several arrows because June had praised her the last time. He plays along and pretends to be sad about her death, but he doesn't have to pretend anymore when he sees the price tag on the costume she is wearing. The next day, he tells Sano that he is going to play along with the pranks to see if she will stop doing them. Hence, when he returns home and sees her being abducted by fake aliens, he puts on the best performance of his life and fights them. However, this doesn't stop Chi. Instead, she prepares him an elaborate skit, asking him to perform better. One time, she pretends to be a dead vampire who has to be revived by pulling out the dagger in her chest. June does as the skit says and gets bitten by her in the process. Following that, she pretends to be Juliet, who needs Romeo's help to be revived from the dead. Similar to the last time, June acts like he is mourning and brings her back to life. At work, he cannot focus anymore and is almost scared to return home. Sano sympathizes with his work friend. To make him avoid the pranks for just a day, he invites the couple to dinner with his wife. They all meet at a restaurant at the end of the day. Sano's wife Yumiko also joins them. While talking, Chi is asked why she decided to marry June. A flashback shows us that after meeting at the restaurant, the pair met in Tokyo as well. June takes Chi to the cafe she always wanted to visit. While walking through the streets of Tokyo, Chi runs after a street vendor that sells her favorite wafer cake. June bolts behind her and finally gets to the vendor. Since he only has one cake left, they share it. Chi gives him the bigger piece, but June asks her to have the bigger one. This was when she fell in love with him. Back in the present, while returning home, June falls in love with his wife again. They look at the moon and appreciate its beauty together. One day, on his way home, June notices an advertisement for a vacancy at a local laundry place. He thinks if Chi starts working, she will have less time for the pranks, so he brings the paper home. Get a job, honey. Stop pretending to be dead. She welcomes him, dressed as an Egyptian princess inside a coffin. After the dramatic encounter, they simply walk to the kitchen for dinner. June tells her about the vacancy and urges her to apply. Chi is skeptical at first, but she agrees to do it anyway. Starting the next day, she works at the laundry shop owned by an old man. Yet, it doesn't stop her from executing the pranks. She pretends to be killed by a bank robber that evening. Having had enough, June tells her that he is tired of seeing her play dead. The next day, Chi goes on a date with Sano's wife, Yumiko, and finds out she has been trying to get pregnant for six years, but hasn't been successful. The couple's relationship is rocky because of this, but Chi's kind words make Yumiko feel better. June brings his wife flowers and her favorite cake, but when he enters the apartment, he sees her pretending to be a ghost rising from her grave. Since he asked her not to play dead, she pretended to be a ghost who was already dead. Clever Chi. She hugs him for the cake and cooks him something good for dinner. On the weekend, she pretends to be a robot, but June forcefully makes her take the mask off. Following that, he notices a letter from his former wife asking him to meet her someday. The pair invites Sano and his wife to dinner one day. Yumiko notices the alligator toy in the room and is fascinated by it. It turns out that she is very much into alligators, which surprises even her husband. Everything goes well, until Sano mentions that men need time off from their wives. This upsets Yumiko, and she gets into an argument with Sano. To make her feel better, Chi offers her the alligator if she wins an arm wrestling match against her. Yumiko wins because she used to train at karate. She happily takes the alligator home. Sano feels bad because he didn't know his wife's interests even after being married for six years. The following day, June comes home to see Chi has turned herself into a person from 2050. For the first few minutes, he plays along and asks her questions about the future. But then, he inquires what he has to do for her to stop pulling these pranks. Chi goes silent and starts to calculate the average number of days they will spend together in the future. Even when he persists, she doesn't answer his question. Some days later, Yumiko tells Chi that she and Sano have decided to separate. She thanks Chi for making her feel appreciated. Because of her, the couple was able to talk about their feelings to each other. Somewhere else, June and Sano go to a restaurant to talk about the matter. Sano claims that the divorce is a good decision for both of them because Yumiko deserves a more attentive partner. June also reveals that his ex-wife once disappeared for two weeks and came back saying she wanted a divorce. By the end of the night, he is very drunk, so Chi picks him up. The following day, they get the news about Chi's father being in the hospital due to a heart attack. They quickly rush to her hometown and meet her father, who has thankfully been saved. Chi meets him but cannot control her tears afterward. When she is not in the room, her father tells June that she hasn't cried since her mother's death. 
He also mentions that one night, after her mother died, Chi saw him crying while looking at her picture. Starting the next day, she began to hide around the house when he returned from work. At first, her father thought it was troublesome and weird. But as time went on, the simple activity of her hiding helped him get over his wife's death because he was occupied. June realizes that he too has been more involved in their relationship since she started to play dead. He registers that her pranks are not a result of her being unsatisfied, but she just wanted to feel closer to him and keep him entertained. Later, the two go to the park where June proposed to her. They spend the rest of their day talking to each other about different things. The pair returns to Tokyo after a few days. Chi comes back home after work to see June lying on the floor with blood spewing from his mouth. She freaks out and tries to wake him up, but soon realizes he is also pulling a prank. The movie ends as June suggests they have dinner, but she is too mad at him for scaring her like that. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.